These are the three gas laws that we've looked at so far. They each assume that some sort of change has happened, um, and they tell us how two variables relate to each other before and after the change. Right, so like Boyle's law here has pressure and volume. We make some sort of change in pressure or in volume, and then tells us how the other one is going to respond. Okay, Lussac's law, pressure and temperature, and Charles' law, volume and temperature. Two variables always. Let's say that I had a problem like this though. Let's say that I had like a balloon, okay, and it was a certain volume, and I wanted to increase the amount of air pressure that's pushing on that balloon, and I wanted to cool that balloon way down, and then I wanted to ask the question, what is the new volume going to be? Okay, we can't use any of these three laws here because there are three variables here. New pressure, new temperature, I want to make it colder, and that's going to cause a new volume. So P, V, and T are going to be variables there. So for that, we use the combined gas law, which is sort of a combination of all three of these laws. And you can see how I put it together. It's P1 times V1. That looks a lot like Boyle's law, divided by T1 equals P2 times V2 divided by T2. So it's like all of these three rules put together uh, in one law so that I can look at how these three variables respond to each other. I could use this combined gas law um, to solve a problem like this. I have a, uh, a balloon is filled with air at sea level, uh, which is 1.00 atms of pressure, 25.0 uh, degrees Celsius. It's tied to a rock and thrown in a cold body of water. I tie to the rock so that it sinks down in the water, okay? Because if I didn't, it would just float on the surface. So tied to a rock, throw it into a cold body of water, and it sinks to the point where the pressure is 4 degrees Celsius, it gets colder, and the pressure is 11 atm. So there's much more pressure pushing on this balloon. What will its new pressure be? So I'm going to use this combined gas law to figure this out. First, let's look at the variables that we already have and the variables that we're going to need to solve for. Okay? A 40 liter balloon, that is V1, is filled with air at sea level. So sea level pressure is 1.00 atm and the temperature is 25.0 degrees Celsius. But remember, we're going to have to convert that to Kelvin temperature because we're dealing with gas. We'll do that in a minute though. It's tied to a rock, blah, blah, blah. It sinks to the point where the temperature is 4 degrees Celsius. So we have T2, although we'll have to convert it to a Kelvin temperature. And the pressure is 11.00 atm. So that means that we have P2. What we're going to be solving for is V2. What will its new volume be? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rearrange the combined gas law here so that we can solve for V2. Here we go. V2 is on this side, so we want to get it alone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by T2 to get T2 out of the, uh, out of the denominator here. All right? Times T2 here, times T2 here. Since the T2 is on the top here and on the bottom here, it cancels out. And I can rewrite this as T2 times P1 times V1 divided by T1 equals P2 times V2. Now again, I want to get this P2 out of the numerator here so that I can get V2 by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by P2. That means that these two P2s are going to cancel out. And my final rewritten equation with V2 isolated all by itself is going to be T2 times P1 times V1 divided by T1 times P2 equals V2. As we've said before, if you get a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of uh, V2 being on its own on the right side, I'll just rewrite this so that it can be a little bit easier. V2 on the left, if that makes you comfortable, equals T2 times P1 times V1 divided by T1 times P2. But all I've done here is I've flipped it around. Okay, so let's go about solving this. The first thing I'm going to want to do is take these two Celsius temperatures and convert them to Kelvins. All right, so I have 25.0 degrees Celsius plus 273 is going to give me uh, 298 Kelvin. And the other temperature that I have to convert is 40.0 degrees Celsius plus 
273, and that's going to give me 277 Kelvin. All right, so now that I have these temperatures in the right units to solve for the equation, let's go ahead and put these variables in. Okay, so we have V2 equals T2. T2 is this, equals 277 Kelvin times P1, the initial pressure, which is 1.00 atm times V1, the initial volume, 40.0 liters. Okay. We're going to divide that by T1, again in Kelvin, 298 Kelvin, which is multiplied by P2, the second pressure, which is 11.00 atm. So I'm going to do that math, and my final answer, rounded to three significant figures, is going to be 3.38. Now, what are my units here? Okay, Kelvin over Kelvin, those cancel out. ATMs over ATMs cancel out, and I'm left with liters here. So my final answer is going to be 3.38 liters. That's rounded to three significant figures because there are uh, three significant figures are the lowest number of significant figures that I have in my answer. So my final answer, 3.38 liters. If you have uh, trouble doing other combined gas law problems, if you don't know quite how to rearrange this equation because it can be a little bit tricky, take a look at the rearranging gas equations video um, where I show how to multiply and divide the variables to isolate one by itself on a certain side of the equation.